So basically what we're going to do right now is we're going to do like almost like a show and tell type beat where we mm -hmm. each individually will show our uh, legends, explain our thought process, a little bit of their backstory, their lore. And after that, we're just going to, you know, get some criticism from Brian himself. Hi, Brian. He might be in the bathroom. Oh, Brian's in the bathroom. One eternity later. My name is Brian. I was fired off Apex for creating Second Rave and uh, <laughs> yeah. everyone was really mad. For creating Stronger Rave. <laughs> yeah. Today I got my, you got me, you got Macro, you got the boy Boom Razzle in the back corner. We decided to invite Lyric. Hello, hello. And then of course, last but certainly not least, we got the actual unofficial developer himself, Moki Sniper. Oh. Moki will be going last like always for these videos because he does his homework, he does the extra credit assignment, he's literally teaching he the class. Crazy. He goes He goes hard <laughs> in the paint, it's a little ridiculous. We're definitely letting Moki go last, but who wants to go first? Right, Moki's <laughs> gotta go last. I'd be happy to go first. And start things off because I'm mostly intimidated and don't want to be compared to other people. Okay. I'm, that's all good. I'm cool with it. Is everyone else cool with it? Yeah. That's cool. Cool. At class, everybody whip out Boom's assignment. <laughs> oh my god. Behold, Rem, <laughs> as in Remedy Laurent, who is our second uh -huh. French character. I've always wanted to take a stab at designing a healer legend. Whenever a legend is added to the game, I make this joke that if they have movement, they're going to be in the top 50%. But if they don't have movement, they're just kind of going to become forgotten about it, at least in pubs, because movement is so strong. So I mm. wanted to have a, a movement healer. So basically, I remember from last time, Brian, things need to come at a cost. So Rem's passive is urgent care. So lowered health increases speed. I don't know the exact speed that I'm thinking of, but possibly like Bangalore's double time or Octane. I think there could be some really fun clips of people who are just extra speedy that allows you to tap strafe harder, wall bounds crazier. So the tactical is like a dart gun. I used Fuse's knuckle cluster thing as the um, base for it. So since I, you know, can't make models and stuff. Oh. So the fun part about this is you hold Q <laughs> it brings up like a nade screen to choose either a health heal, the battery, for a shield heal, Ooh. or a octane stim. So you can shoot your teammates to heal them. Like the health dart <laughs> would be like 50 health, the battery would be like 30 shields, and then the stim, you just like give a octane stim to your teammates. You cycle through the wheel, and you probably have two of these stacked on you at any given time, like kind of normal cooldowns for these. I was gonna say the Crayola's a yeah. nice touch. Well, yeah, that's yeah, the stim. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the, uh, the stim <laughs> picture, so I just put that. You get the idea. Ultimate, so it's basically a med crafter mm. so think about a replicator except only pharmaceuticals with a 60 second flash point around it so mm. again that give and take where your team gets benefit but you're also healing your enemies in a pretty big radius you're showing where you are where you are so there's some sacrifice to that i have like this air conditioning uh unit that i got offline so it might look like that and with like a big bubble <laughs> around it is that what the, is that what and, that um, image is <laughs> also thinking brian and this is my last thing sorry sorry if i've spoken too much so you're choosing you know from this wheel <laughs> of what your items are with craft Crafting mats. I also thought it'd be kind of cool if there could be the first instance of like a trade up. Four cells are the equivalent of one bat. So it'd be nice to get extra value. You know, you have bad loot or something. It's like, oh, we have 12 cells. That's okay. We got remedy on our team. So we're just going to make ourselves into bats. Oh. Um, and make our syringes. So I didn't really articulate that on this uh, scan thing. So uh, thank you for uh, coming to my TED talk. This is Rem, Remedy, <laughs> Laurent. You had the opportunity to call him Remy and you just didn't. I probably should have <laughs> a little uh, ratatouille action in there. But this is my attempt at a healer dude i think healers are freaking hard and this guy has way too much going on i'll go next if that's okay with you lyric yeah no okay problem. so i didn't have enough time to do cool little like explanations but i'll do my best to mm -hmm. to explain it vocally and maybe when a, someone edits this into a video they can just do it in post so i spent a lot more time drawing this guy than i did actually <laughs> like than i should whatever, whatever you have fun with <laughs> so his lore is kind of sick so this guy is called 64. imagine there's like this world in like titanfall they had to deal with a lot of like simulacrums like ash types and like Revenant types and essentially they had like a whole war between like mechs and stuff and they successfully won and I guess like whoever the original the first king of the numerics was was number one and they always wore like the robots helmets like their head and stuff and that like signified who they were they essentially are just like this like really interesting hunter gatherer society of people that uses the scraps of technology that they have from like the wars and stuff with with these like different robots that made that's all their sick. technology so that's like the backstory I don't know which planet this would be and I don't know why he would join yeah. the apex games but 
but that doesn't matter. Why is Rem in the Apex games? He has a baguette. <laughs> like, yeah. Jesus. So his, his passive ability is a passive ability I actually, I've seen before used in like, uh, I think Rogue Company had a, had a small, had a character like this, where essentially you just grab items from a, from a short distance. This wouldn't be super overpowered, like from across the map, you can just grab like a, a Phoenix kit, right? If, for example, like you can also grab like banners this way, like within line of sight. But the point is that what it does is like, say you need ammo or you need heals and you just don't want to like run through like the open and there's like clearly loot right there. There's, you can even pull like death boxes a little bit closer towards you. So this is just like his main passive ability is just using like magnetism that he has within like his hands and stuff. Cause he's like completely like a cyborg. That's why his skin is like not really like a skin tone. That's my skin. <laughs> That's your skin. That's skin. Oh yeah. Why basically. Are you, saying I'm a robot? <laughs> you are, you are robots. You are robots, my guy. <laughs> and his tactical is the one that I think is the most interesting and something that I've always wanted in Apex because they've had this in Overwatch. They've had this in other games and it's a deflect. Let's say like a 15 second cooldown you have on this ability, but every time like, um, if, as long as you're looking at somebody shooting at you, you could potentially deflect the bullets and grenades, uh, and like yeah, ordnance yeah, and you stuff. can deflect but grenades, bullets, ordnance, but just for a small duration, and it would deflect back. So to do like whatever the damage would be, and you're aiming at a specific person, it would it would do that damage back, and it would be very clear that he's that he's deflecting because like his eyes would mm. glow up, and like his and there'd be like a big red circle around his hands. It's not gonna be instant deflect. It'd be very similar. Some of the titans have the ability where they like suck up a bunch of stuff and then shoot it back. It'd be a lot oh, more similar to that. Yeah, the vortex yes. shield yeah, exactly. Vortex shield. It'd be more similar to that. So it has a lot more counterplay. It's not like you're just, you craber somebody and then they craber you back. No, it'd be like a craber, you craber somebody and you're like, oh crap, get out of the way. He's about to craber us back. Boom. Oh, like, that'd be sweet. Yeah, no, it gives, it gives us some time for counterplay. It makes it so you can't just be mm -hmm. like, you know, completely out of luck in the middle of a fight. But what it does for him is it allows for another character um, to finally have more ability to protect his team, even for a small like duration while they like cross like an open area or just like, or <clears> even <throat> it's even good offensively when you're just pushing into a fight because they're trying to mm -hmm. like shoot you and you're just over here taking all the damage or they don't even shoot you at all because they're just like don't shoot him i don't want to get shot back so you have to yeah. like you have to respect <laughs> it and that's the same thing with his ultimate his ultimate is very similar it's called number lock it's imagine like he like slams down kind of like how newcastle does right and it creates a small little bubble around him but the bubble keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger if it gets shot at it's funny that the ultimate would like grow until it's like a consequence you know what i mean like yeah i know literally it, it would come towards yeah. you and then you're just inside the bubble so, like, like so, it's been, then it's useless so like you know? well, so what this ultimate does though is becomes a very good support utility because you can essentially use it as a mini bubble just to res your teammate for free. Like obviously they can go inside that bubble still and shoot you the similar to Gibby. The best case scenario is you use it in response to like a big ult or something and it makes it so you have this huge like protection for your team temporarily. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think he'd be a pretty interesting character. I think it, I think his uh, whole aesthetic is, is my vibe. I, I like shirtless <laughs> dudes. <laughs> I always gotta whip out the shirtless, the shirtless dudes. I also am a fan of people with masks like and you don't know what they look like. That's my character. I, I just really enjoy the idea of like a deflect and I just wanted to make a kit around that. Yeah, that's, love it. that's sick. I really like the tactical on this. Cool. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so Should we do lyric next? Yeah, lyric. Let's do it. Where'd you get this design well, from? Well, that's just that the mirror's edge. edge. I was going to say, I was <laughs> going to say. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> because I guess she just embodies movement. That's what I just came up with. That's what I first thought of. So I was like, okay. So this mm. character is basically like solo fragger, even no fill if you're playing no fill kind of role like basically completely like selfish abilities yeah. mm -hmm. and her only like use to the team is like her ability to like just frag and if she's not good at it you know then she's gonna be useless for your team kind of like a arena from valorant oh but, yeah like, apex her passive is Anywhere, anytime she's in the air above taller than like a character model height, she can stomp to the ground. It's like a hard zip, pretty fast to the ground. Ooh. She just darts all the way down and it'll stun people in the radius of her like landing and it'll actually also damage them if she like direct impacts them or something like that. Same key as your slide key, you just hit it again in air to stomp. And then I have this like extra thing, like if you time hitting that same key right when you hit the ground, then you're granted a like no fall stun and you can keep your momentum and like slide out of it if you want to. If you're like skilled enough to time it correctly, you wouldn't get it for free, but you That's know. Cool. The tactical is a dash. I thought of it before, but I saw Moki last video also had a dash. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's my bad but yeah so this is a dash in any direction that you're looking at can't go upwards and like fly but and i want it to be a dash that's like pretty quick so i can escape but you're not going so far to where like they just cannot catch you you know so it's pretty short 
certain distance, but pretty quick. So it's basically like just a quick getaway, but like you'll probably still have to fight them. But it's just kind of like a reposition, kind of like Wraith Q, but a lot shorter, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> and then for the ultimate, this is sort of inspired by like a COD perk. Yeah, ninja. And it would be increased movement speed for a certain amount of time by 25%, probably a little slower than like Bloodhound ult, but kind of the same idea. And then basically any, it would reduce any noise that Vertigo makes by a certain percent. I put 90%, I don't know if that's OP, but something around there. And it would just basically like silence her footsteps, her gunfire, you know, Ooh, her dash. I was going to ask, the gunfire? I was just thinking about footsteps. Oh, damn. The gunfire <laughs> so is the coolest part. So this is like an entry fragger type of character. Like most of the time you're going to go for the knock on a first guy who's like, you know, he's kind of like situated away from his buddies. And if his comms, like it's kind of putting their comms to the test. If his comms aren't good enough and he's not making like precise like comms, like where he's at, how low he is, you know, like they're not going to be able to get this trade because they can't just listen and hear where it came from. You know, like the, if the old is popped, like you're going to have to use better teamwork to like try and take down a vertigo or something like that just because of the not hearing the footsteps and gunfire part and then i would also have it last just a certain amount of time probably similar to like bloodhound all like 30 seconds and you know an increase by five or so per kill in your old mm. pretty pretty mm. insane ult but if you're not very good it's not gonna you know it's not gonna seem very op but if you are very good then it can be op kind of like arena ult from valorant yeah just I get you. in apex form do you picture the tactical being like stacked like knuckle clusters or something are there like two of them you think i would just want one but like uh, maybe like 10 second cooldown so like you know i feel like it's not fair because like everybody gets their ultimate where no one can hear footsteps <laughs> <laughs> yeah i knew this was gonna i had to say i had to say i, I, I knew someone was. was gonna say that like you can't hear it anyway lol but, lol but this LOL. one is for sure you're not <laughs> yeah. hearing anything but i kind of gunshots is what's really cool that's yeah, the, the craziest part. part is cool and also if it stacks like with other ultimates that would make her using the jump pad pretty much old octane yeah dude dude that would be if she uses it, it in her old mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh Oh, that like would be no the kind noise. of thing about combinations. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it could be insane. I was thinking about giving it to all of her teammates, but I was like, I oh, don't know, that might be a little OP. Oh my god, yeah, it's like very little team play, but I do like that she's just the entry fragger, like kind of like what Wraith kind of does, but better for specifically yeah, being like a solo player. She has to rely on her solely fragging kind of deal. Nice, good stuff, thank Lyric. You. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now we got last but certainly not least, download all the 16 extra photos that he has. I think I have it all. It's I not think, even I think that I much. It. It's not even that much. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff can we, can we four, reveal? Right? Can we reveal, Moki? I didn't go that overboard with designing all the intricacies and nuances and how, how I want him to be played, but. To make up for that, I went a bit overboard with the design. <laughs> Did you draw this? <laughs> no, as you see on top, it's illustrated by oh, Pune blind. on Twitter. It's gorgeous. Uh, wow. she's, yeah, she's a concept artist that recently posted like a self or fan-made legend. And it pretty much looked like official art. He's not like completely selfish in terms of team play, but very selfish in my regard. I want Titanfall oh, movement in Apex. <laughs> <laughs> what I have to do together. <laughs> so yeah, passive is just a double jump. And the image you just had on screen there would be like the UI for it because I would want him to have like two charges of it because I don't want it to be too spammy during a gunfight to just double jump around all the time. And you get like mm. extremely frustrated having to fight him in close quarters, at least in his normal state. That's why I want him to have like two double jumps and then they recharge and there's like a UI indicator showing you, you now have two double jumps and you use both of them and they have to recharge. Then his tactical would be just straight up Titanfall wall running, but also then overcharge his double jump. So he can double jump all the time and use his double jump to maneuver around with the wall running. Because as soon as you don't have double jumping with wall running, it becomes a a lot less useful especially if you're really good with it like corner wall running and staying in corners or helping you if you mess up and fall off the wall etc and oh, i would man. imagine it to last like i don't know something between five to ten seconds the wall run is five so, to ten seconds yeah so you activate your tactical and can then wall run mm, okay i was gonna ask how accurate is would you think the weapons are when you're wall running Ooh, yeah or do you have weapons do you even have access to weapons while you're running wall running? yeah, yeah. You, you completely have access to all your inventory while double jumping and wall running and 
another idea for the double jump I had would be that it's no momentum punishment like you have with Valkyrie's passive. This way it becomes not restricted to you with what you can combine it. Like you can combine it with a super glide and you can combine it with a wall jump and etc etc. Nice. The ultimate, that's actually something I was struggling a bit and then Pune also suggested like having it maybe more Titan inspired and that's then where the idea came from from having him a bit Ion inspired. His ultimate with tripwire cage. It's basically the tripwires that Ion also has. You throw like a thing that places in the middle and from that then a circle of those trip wires get deployed. Imagine it like a Watson fence circle but just made out of these trip wires. Right. They fulfill a very basic function of when enemies walk through them they get stunned or maybe even damaged like with Watson fences and then the nuance comes in your team can either shoot the core in the middle which oh. make all of them explode into a huge smoke cloud. Basically Bangalore smokes but as an ultimate. Or or you can shoot the individual traps and have small smoke plumes. So way smaller than a single Bangalore smoke. So you can decide between do I want to stay protected from someone walking in from a certain direction or do I want to be visually protected? Can enemies shoot it or would it like and break them or would it just be like the enemy shoot it and cause the same thing to happen? I would not want enemies to be able to shoot them and explode them into smokes but definitely destroy them like a new castle. Oh, uh, okay. Then you also have an image you sent us of the 6-4 gates. He's the son of gates. <gasps> okay, that's cool. How Don't the worry. design came to be is a bit of, of course, because of that pilot inspired and he needs needs the pilot helmet to be able to activate the trip wires because they are titan tech. Moki, as usual, always come in and clutch. Brian, now that we've uh, gone through everybody's things, you want to you wanna give your insight, thoughts, opinions, criticisms, everything laid on us. In general, I mean, I think these are all fun and creative and you, without knowing it, have touched on things that we have prototyped before oh. in different ways. So I'm going to speak to them as we try it and I'm going <laughs> to tell you why they work or don't work or whatever. Once again, full disclaimer, right? Like, I don't know what the team is doing or planning. Mm -hmm. So all of my comments yeah. should be taken with like 8,000 tons of grains of salt because <laughs> everything changes. That out of the way. So so Rem, um, Rem is really interesting because it's, I don't know, we talked about it a little bit last time, Boom, but but you like to go, here's a thing, and then you want to go, but I want to add like another layer to it. So the, the idea of if my health is lower or if I'm, you know, as some percentage of maximum shields versus health, so there's like incentive to have red shields for this character or whatever. Like there's something you could do there to tweak it to be like, hey, you're going to be moving faster the weaker you are to like get away. That's cool. I would even say it's faster than Octane and Bangalore and stuff because that's such a huge disadvantage. It's an interesting risk and reward concept. The tactical, like there's a lot of choices there, but you, you just got to pick a lane. The clarity of something like uh, Anna from Overwatch. Yeah. I, I hit teammate, they get health. I hit bad guy, they get hurt. Done. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you just yeah. kind of have like a, yeah. a very clear line and everyone understands what's happening. If you give different outputs in such a way that players aren't able to react and they can't say, oh, which version of Rem is this right now? Imagine having to communicate that to your team. You're like, I think it's the shield guy maybe, but then he switches like a second later like, ah crap, he's doing the health thing now. It becomes a, a tactical nightmare and harder for the players to manage. You have to pick a lane. Hmm. That goes cleanly with the, the pharmacy is like, there's a lot going on there. Spawning a flashpoint, cool. Totally down with spawning a flashpoint because it'll heal everybody inside and it's going to basically prolong the fight and conserve resources. Like, that sounds good to me. Having like a med center crafter should just be a thing mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. Like, it should just be like, sometimes these crafters on spawn or something like that. Like, that's kind of cool. I was concerned I that you'd be upset about his design being so beautiful that no one would buy skins. <laughs> I'm on purpose just <laughs> not going to touch that at all. I'm just gonna... <laughs> But no, like, it's fine. I think I think the idea of support is really important to Apex in general, and it is really, really hard to design. Good stuff, Boom. You got... Brian didn't tear you down as bad this time than he did last time. <laughs> boom, boom learned. He leveled up. The next character is mine. My man 64. <laughs> So uh, Vortex Shield and Deflection, this is something that they tried really early in Apex. But the idea was like, when you play test it, the result of make someone else stop shooting is always such a hard thing to justify because unless you are in a one-on-one -on -one fight, which doesn't always happen, there's once again, there's no solo mode, right? So let's just imagine you're in a one-on-one -on -one fight and you have no backup, you have no support in the moment. You're telling the players to stop and do nothing.
nothing because they're not going to shoot at you. They're going to wait. So what'll happen is people just stand and stare at each other. In playtesting, it just feels bad for the other player. Like they're just mm. like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And all I can do is like reposition. That might be okay. It's hard to say with like the current state of Apex, but to tell people to stop doing the fun stuff is always really, really difficult. For this to be useful, it would have to have a low cooldown and a really good effect. Otherwise, it's what we like to call a dead button because it doesn't do anything if no one's shooting at you. It definitely goes into the ultimate because it, they definitely obviously play together. And that's it. Like it, it could feel like a taunt. It could feel like I want you to stop shooting. But then we have a double up with the ultimate. So together we have like, it's doing kind of the same thing where if nothing is going on, it doesn't do much and that's fine. If you're saying it's like a Gibby kind of meets Watson kind of idea when you lock down the ultimate. So like ordinance doesn't work, shooting doesn't work and it eats up more space. I like that part. That's kind of interesting. I just feel like it needs to be cleaner. Like if you're inside the bubble, your bullets don't move until the bubble's over. We're, we're shooting, there's bullets in the sky and then now it's like, oh crap, when this thing ends, they're all just going to go. Yeah, that, that was kind of like <laughs> the goal. Now, it was like if it deflects, it also deflects at the end. Like it would like expand and then just like once it's done, just get out of the way. Don't deflect deflect freeze do you know what i mean like how do i put this deflect is really difficult because that means don't shoot and if it's freeze absorb you know if it does something different then that still allows us to shoot right like the other player can still shoot and there's ramifications for doing so in the case of the gibby shield it is literally protect and so mm -hmm. if you're saying that the verb is protect then focus on protection rather than all this other stuff but if we're saying this is like a lockdown zone if there is shooting it'll all create a chaos like a tornado <clears throat> of chaos and bullets at the end then and that to me is really interesting because now you've created kind of a risk and reward zone. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get what you mean. So free, like freezing, on that verb. yeah. So I gotta change like the way it's this, the way I describe it. So it's more of like a slow mm -hmm. freeze that like punishes you later. Like like right now you can still shoot at it and eventually like bullets will can go through or something. But like the more you do, the more it's gonna get back at you and it's gonna be really not. You're gonna want to get out of the way. All of game design is inputs and outputs. So like, what do I get? What do you get? And is it fair? And that's why designing legends is so goddamn hard. But no, overall, really cool. Okay, next up we got probably the two most aggressive. Me and Boom kind of like, I feel like toned it down slightly with like how aggressive we wanted these legends to be. And then we, then we got... These are in your face. <laughs> these are very in your face. The movement cam coming. <laughs> oh, Yo, Vertigo is OP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Both y'all, you're going to get you're gonna get another earful. Anything that makes combat less readable where characters are moving around quickly, that is so hard mm -hmm. to read. In general, it is a shift that is very good for you, mm -hmm. but very very bad for everybody else. And that's why Valk has such a momentum stop. It was like, we have to do this or this character becomes untenably yeah. impossible to shoot. These legends have like been pitched and designed in the past too, in the way that it's like everything supports everything else and it's mm -hmm. perfect synergy. And when you have perfect synergy, it's just like, well, first I will do this, then I will do that, then I will do the, the final thing, and then I win. <laughs> no, it's, it's literally, these are the things, and these are the steps that I will do. I will activate yeah. my ultimate, I will dash behind them, I will stomp, stun them, turn around, mastiff. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like a very clear, a very clear play pattern. Any character that can reasonably stand up like a 3v1 which this character could, is a problem because it would become, okay, must pick. This is the game now. Crazy yeah. dashes, stomping, no sound, LOL, once again. <laughs> For creating a legend that would absolutely go and dominate, yes, you've succeeded. But is it fair? Totally not. And that and that's what I mean is like, it's really, really hard to create something that feels fair for everybody else and feels good for you. If you want to tune it in a different way, like mm -hmm. the stomp makes a lot of sound and it takes a moment to charge in the air. So you're sitting duck for just however long okay. that makes sense. Yeah. And then you slam down. It's like, okay, that's kind of cool. The dash itself, just like race Q, big wind up. And you can't mm -hmm. pop your gun out quickly because you've created a better Q. The mode facing ultimate like Bloodhound where it's like, you know, mm -hmm. increased speed or, or whatever. That's just hard to justify for X amount of time. Bloodhound is very much like a, you know, you can see people plus there's a speed boost. So for me, this one is just like, well, we need to find something else because you can't do the noise thing. Like you just can't. I'm okay with modes that create different gameplay utility, but but what else mm -hmm. would it be? Like that would be my feedback. Yeah. It's like, you know, lock, lock that in. But otherwise, I mean, as I said, I want to play this character and, and dominate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play her, but I don't want to play against her. That's just, thank you, Brian. Local stuff, though. You're going to give some feedback. Yeah. And I really want to hear this no. feedback about why you guys don't add a, a Titanfall type character into your game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. I want to live in, in an imaginary world where, where there's oh. no reason why Titanfall movement can't be. <laughs> 
So ultimately, it's the same thing with, with Vertigo. This character is dope in the same way. The main thing is always going to be a readability combat. So once again, if I can double jump over your head and or I can wall run, even with restrictions, like I, I don't mind that. It's, a, it's an interesting idea. There has to be downsides. You know, the idea of cooldown and the wind up and no weapons and all that stuff. You know, once again, with intent the character would be obscenely utterly broken without it. When we introduce quick moving, unpredictable movement, it is a nightmare, right, to try and like do that. So when you introduce that, everyone can do that without walls necessarily. And then when you add in a wall, they can do it even more where they like double jump and then they like, you can do crazy double jumps and like you can increase momentum and go really fast. You're doing that. This is uh, what was called in Titanfall 2, about the Brownian fluid problem where it's like a the, physics the term. What? Brownian, Brownian motion. You, you, you Brownian brought motion. up that exact same point the last time I, and I, I just just for everybody who's new or, or coming in but it's the same thing because when you when you don't have a front line when you can't understand where the action is happening when people mm. can appear behind you above you left right and center you don't have a through line to understand the combat in the beginning of apex if y'all remember pathfinder was so broken and he was everywhere and one pathfinder could go and whip around the whole lobby and kill everybody and it was insane that's too far it's a extreme example but that's why pathfinder got nerfed into the sun because it was too much mm. and so all that to say double jump in and of itself was added to like a jump pad because it had well you're already clearly flying through the air right and it was meant to reduce the predictability of your jump so you can mm -hmm. like shift but if once again if you can do it at any time anywhere it makes it really hard to shoot you and if you can shoot while you're doing it because you can do it anywhere then you become nearly unstoppable there mm -hmm. are so many skilled players that will obliterate any character that does not have that same ability to move like this here's what i would change i'm gonna jump around a little bit the tripwire <laughs> cage for me okay i'm setting on an area where i'm staying i'm trying to make sure that our team is here, we're guarding an area, we're preventing people from coming in. And I thought that was really mm -hmm. interesting for a high movement character, because I'm like, this ultimate doesn't allow me to be mobile. It literally tells me to stay still. And I'm like, that's very interesting. While thematically, it's absolutely accurate. It's really, really cool. I'm like, there's a potential flippity doodah here. What that means is the <laughs> ultimate is, <laughs> in my head, is activate pilot mode. Mm -hmm. You get wall run, you get double jump. Oh. While you're doing those things, you get no gun, period. But for 60 seconds, whatever the hell, I don't care. You get X amount of time that says you can do pilot sh and you can be awesome <laughs> but the verb the verb that we're looking for is it could be one of two things it could be escape or it could be chase but it cannot be obliterate oh. <laughs> let's say i want escape as my verb that ultimate now becomes my tactical and what's really cool about it let's just say i throw one down but with my highlighted pilot vision like that i have as my like passive or whatever i can activate that from a distance and if i activate <laughs> it smoke if I shoot it, it goes away. Then it remains consistent. I can set up a trap and like guide someone to the trap and murder them when they get into the area. Or I can set it off early to distract them and chase somebody down. But the idea is I can have a means of escape with my tactical, whatever it turns into be. And then my ultimate is re roam movement. You answered my question I was about to ask you, which is like, how would you make it fair? Like, how would you make a pilot exist, but fair? Like, and you just answered it. I love that idea. And it seems like I could actually see it in being implemented into this game, which is why I'm like, my mind's blown. That's the really cool part. And you can make it really readable, right? Like the jets are going crazy. They might have like electrical eye glow. They, you know what I mean? Like you could make, you could sell it to be like, oh, they're in crazy nonsense mode right now. And yes, they can shoot me, but not while they're running on the wall. I don't envy you like where the team has to go with all the like future legends to be like, how do we make sure in the same way? Like none of this is overpowered, but still exciting. For people who don't know, it's not like we pop out a legend every three months. Like we're, we have people working on legends for like over a year yeah. before it even gets to like, okay, now let's like do the concept. It's an incredible process. You know, it takes a long time to get to something that that is like gonna be made you know like you'll see with the next legend you'll see with everybody else is like i can't wait for all the comments and thoughts and feedback on that legend too brian you are you articulate yourself so well without actually like hurting anybody's feelings while also being like critical of our responses and i just can't <laughs> believe that you are the same man that puts on the hypest freaking streams ever so show some love to brian Thank on you. the rocks developer extraordinaire he's nothing like this on stream <laughs> no, really not at all. like like I, I told you i'm in game dev mode on stream i'm just like i just don't want to think about it i just want to be weird and do voices yeah. and press buttons but i think these are all compelling and interesting don't sell yourself short like this is really good stuff because you play the game so much you know it you know the things you want to see and it's really the designer's job to be like well this is what our players want how do how do we make it work within what we already know exists what the data says and our intuition with what's coming up next thanks very much for having me thanks brian
Brian. You guys. Thanks so Thank much you, for Brian. being here. Thanks, Brian. You're the best. We'll always have you here. <laughs> you you <laughs> did hurt. You did hurt Moki's feelings, though. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw the Titanfall character, and I'm like, I, I he doesn't have to explain anything. I was like, I, it's gonna be a problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Moki. I know for a fact you're already you're already probably making a whole thing showing how Sentra works. You're like, I don't care what Brian says. I'm putting this character in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just always a fun little time to just showcase, and I love getting Brian's feedback because it is getting somebody that has yeah. worked from behind the scenes and has seen like the development side of like how these legends work it's always fun to get the, like, their opinions and see just where we're going a little too far where we're going a little too little mm -hmm. i never i didn't think you could go too little he was just like yeah your ability is like kind of bad <laughs> dead but dead buttons <laughs> what i will take away from this all is this thing what brian mentioned this time of the verb mm -hmm. yeah like mm -hmm. that's huge especially when he criticized like my wall run of don't have the verb of obliterate but either chase or escape mm -hmm. and that's something that he didn't bring up last time like as a game design term Term. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's very valuable feedback and helps us and chat and everyone that will view the videos to understand where they are coming from and how deep you have to think about gameplay yeah. and what you're trying to achieve with your abilities. I had a great time. I really do like my design. I hope you guys know my art skills are impressive. I know. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for vibing. Anyway, if this becomes a video, play the outro now.